Hello and welcome to the Hardware Intel webinar series, the webinar from UAP exploring how hardware can help to shape our future. From households to commercial, we'll be discussing a range of construction related topics. And in today's webinar, we're talking about TS007, sold secure and three star regulations and its impact on the industry. My name's Nicola John and I'm a business consultant and having worked in both construction and the door industry for many years, regulations and quality products are really important to me. So joining me today are Barry Halpin, UAP's Sales Director and Julian Roberts, UAP's Technical Services Director. Welcome both to the Hardware Intel Episode 3. Hi, oh, hi. hi. <laughs> You've both appeared on previous episodes. However, for any new viewers or listeners, perhaps you could tell them a little bit about your job role um, and what you do for the company. So maybe Barry, if you could do that for us first. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm Barry Halpin, sales director. I've been with UAP for nine years this week, actually. Oh, congratulations. Uh, <laughs> I didn't even realize until it actually flashed up on my, uh, I think it was on LinkedIn yeah. or something. Yeah, uh, so nine years, sales director for around five of them years. So my main role is probably really the link between the customer, our, mainly our main large key accounts, our house customers, if you like, the link between the customer and UAP. And by UAP, I mean all aspects of UAP, not just sales, for instance. Yes. Yeah. So forecasting, products, technical queries, site visits. So my role is, is, is massively varied um, with lots of fingers in different pies throughout the company. Um, but ultimately, yeah, my, my main role is to achieve the sales targets. Great and tough industry at the moment. So that's a, that's a really yeah. uh, big role. Um, Julian, welcome back. Oh yeah. <laughs> welcome back, Julian. Um, do you want to let the viewers know a little bit about you? Cause you're in a new role. So. Thank you. Hello all. My name is Julian Roberts. I'm the technical services director for UAP. This is quite a wide and varied role, including the development and testing of new products, audit testing and certification of the existing products, along with liaison development and testing for external clients. Prior to that, and related to today's discussions, I was the quality manager for Full X Testing Services, a UCAS accredited test laboratory conducting security testing of doors. One of the tests that was frequently carried out was that of security hardware and specifically cylinder testing. Brilliant. OK, so I've got two of the right people with me today um, and we're going to be discussing TS007 and cylinders and security. Uh, and I wanted to refresh my memory actually on this and I'm going to learn a lot today, I think. Um, but I did a little bit of research and I could see that sort of 60 percent of consumers in a recent survey had some awareness of things like BSI kite mark and they were linking that to quality. Um, so I thought maybe we could start with knowing exactly what TS007 is, because it sounds like something out of a Bond movie to some people. So, Julian, what is what is TS007? Yeah, TS007 is a standard published by the Door and Hardware Federation in conjunction with the Glass and Glazing Federation and is endorsed by Secure by Design. It's in respect of the enhanced security performance requirements for replacement cylinders and also associated hardware. When products are actually tested, they're tested in timber and UPVC test blocks in a variety of manners. But the standard really developed, it was prepared following the emergence of attack methods that specifically focused on cylinders within locks. Ah, right. OK, well, it would probably lead me to a question then, Barry. What does this mean for you and your customers? Like the thing it means to my customers is the, the accreditations themselves come from, as Julian said, DHF and the, and the GGF, which are independent uh, authorities on testing. So rather than me as a salesperson trying to tell a customer that the cylinder I'm selling them is the best thing since sliced bread, these are independently regulated authorities that are testing to specific standards and they give a certain, well, huge amount of over the performance and the security of that product. So the standards themselves give a huge amount of insurance, if you like, that the product that they're putting in their doors is fit for purpose and is ultimately as good as they can get for their door. 
Yeah. And I know that existing customers and some of our, you know, if, if a new customer's watching, they've got access to Julian and his team, haven't they, to talk about what testing you've done on your products and how that goes and what, what you know, what you do, yeah. um, which I think is invaluable for, you know, having been a previous customer, it's invaluable for your customers to do that and be able to have that access to knowledge, yeah. you know, because there's a minefield out there, isn't it, these, these accreditations. Absolutely. And, you know, Julian helped run the, the test facility down at Forex, which was UCAS accredited at the time. Um, we took the decision to move that test facility to Manchester. We, it is no longer UCAS accredited, but it is still fully functional. And yes. We do a lot of indicative testing there that Julian helps. Uh, Julian does all, all the testing. So we invite customers to do indicative testing prior to going to uh, testing, which we know is expensive. Yeah. So yeah. we can use a, a certain level of um, of comfort that the products they're testing are going to perform in the actual physical test itself so yeah these these test rigs and the test facilities are there and are available to, to all our customers if they yeah. need them. That's, i mean that is is you know i think invaluable for them um which we're going to look at testing in a in a few questions time but i wanted to just ask julian about the sold secure accreditation because i don't know much about that so what is sold secure accreditation julian and and what does it mean for our customers what is it well, Sold Secure is actually owned and administered by the Master Locksmiths Association. Right. During the SS312 Diamond Standard Testing, which is the higher level of testing for cylinders, they're tested in ways using methods and tools over and above perhaps the standards required by TS007 for three-star cylinders. The specifications that Sold Secure used, they're tweaked continuously to combat the more up-to-date and evolving techniques being used to attack various products. So the Sold Secure SS312 Diamond Standard Test, that allows the use of additional tools and certain items that perhaps be available on the internet, online, rather than the tools that are specifically prescribed in PAS24 for the security, hardware and cylinder attack tests. The methods that they actually use and the tools that they use during the attacks. Well, those aren't for public, they're not disseminated publicly for obvious reasons as that yeah. information is quite sensitive. But as you can see in the slide that's attached, rather than cutting out around a cylinder nice and neatly around the cylinder, they actually make a circular aperture in the test blocks. So that allows greater access for the tools that are being used by that skilled test engineer. Right, that's quite interesting, isn't it, to see that on the picture. Um, so how does that sort of link or, or doesn't link, I don't know, to your three-star kite mark testing? What what do we do in that, Julian? Well, for a cylinder to obtain a three-star kite mark, along with the initial testing requirements, obviously there'll be a review of the manufacturing process that's conducted. That independently determines that that final product complies with specific secure, uh, standards for security, quality and performance. And then you also have ongoing factory control audits and the testing as part of that scheme. Well, in regards specifically to the test, there are three elements to that. The first being EN 1303, which is a European standard for building hardware, cylinders for locks. It details requirements and test methods. That specifies the performance and requirements for things like strength, security, durability, performance, corrosion resistance for cylinders and their original keys. Perhaps some examples of the testing that's involved in that would be cyclic operation of 100,000 cycles, operations of extremes of temperature, both high and low, as well as key strength tests. Another facet then of that testing process is the part carried out by the Master Locksmiths Association, which is called Cylinder Vulnerability Assessment. Well, that's in line with the requirements of BS3621. That means that the cylinder will be anti-drill, anti-pick and anti-bump. And that's carried out by a panel of three expert locksmiths with many years of experience. And then moving on, the final part of the testing is the manual attack using the tools that we can see on the screen that are permitted within PAS24. But it's made more onerous by the aperture once again around the perimeter of the cylinder being enlarged as we can see in the image rather than cut it out neatly as we perhaps we could see for the the cylinder aperture at the rear then instead you've got a 40 mil wide by 60 mil high 
hole made within that test block and that allows full unrestricted access to that cylinder for the test engineer. Wow, that is it's quite rigorous then. Um, and you know that if your, your cylinder has passed that, then it's uh, you know going to be pretty secure, isn't it? So, Barry, what about for your customers then? So they, they, they've got access to indicative testing, like, you know, um, as you said earlier on. Um, are there end users, the customers at home or their social housing landlords really looking for these three star, you know, tests and things? What are they looking for? Yeah, I think they, they are. I think they're... The market's changed completely, really, over the past few years since, since, since the inception of TS-07, which I think was back in 2011. So it, it's a much more visible uh, certification now. Um, more and more people, actually. It used to be when you, go, you used to go visit customers, there would be, they'd, they'd almost make two types of doors. They'd make a cheaper door and make a security door. We tend to find nowadays that a lot of customers have, have done away with the cheaper doors and they're, they're only making uh, past 24 SPD door sets. So they obviously, and they're, and they're more expensive, the products on them are more expensive. So it's, it's at a higher cost to the customer, but that cost is reflective in the performance and the security of the door set that they're producing. So they're, they're, they absolutely do see the benefit of both Kite Mark and TS007 and obviously Soul Secure Diamond Standard as well. Yeah, so they're giving them that peace of mind, aren't they? That they're they're purchasing something that's you know meeting a, a very high standard. Yeah, both of security and of reliability and performance as well. So it's not yeah. it's not just about security when it comes to the cat mark. It's also about the, the the lifespan of the product itself. So if it has a cat mark, you're covering both bases with security and performance. Yeah, and this series of webinars has been all about legislation. So this is our third one of of looking at sort of legislation changes. You know, things have been changing quite a lot in our market over the last couple of years. Um, are there any changes, Julian, uh, recently in regards to these this particular um, set of tests? Well, perhaps the N thirteen R three has remained constant now for a number of years. However, the other testing, such as Pass twenty four, updated GVI and Sold Secure are ever evolving as test engineers attempt differing new or ingenious methods to gain entry or the locksmith they hone their skills also. Testing perhaps also reacts to the differing methods that we find that the criminal fraternity attempt and due yeah. to the internet and social media these days those methods just can be spread so widely shared very quickly indeed. Yeah, yeah. I mean, with the advent of people all working at home, it probably scuppered the burglars a little bit because we're all we're all at home now instead of out at work, or or people are going back out at work. But um, so that accreditation barrier is obviously really important to your fabricators, to the manufacturers. Um, how do we make sure that they know what what accreditation we've got and how we, you know, what what products have got that accreditation on them? Um, we use. Use the the, the the kite mark, the diamond standard. The you know every time I'm giving a presentation to a customer for any type of product, it's always to do with the the certification of that particular product. UAP has always been kind of at the forefront of certification and trying to push people down a route that it moves away from the white frame trade, still in the white handle products, if you like, more toward. Originally, one star cylinders before the invention of three star cylinders, and then when three star cylinders came to the market, again, we were one of the first people to introduce the three star cylinder into the market. Uh, and then to educate people as to what three stars and TS007 means. Um, so we've, we've been used to talking to customers about accreditation and certification for years now, you know, certainly for as long as I've been within the company. So I'd, I'd, I'd be very surprised to hear if any of our customers would be just be coming to for a trade cylinder they i think they see uap as being right if i need a three-star cylinder if i need accredited cylinder if i need past 24 products i'll speak to uap because obviously they've been dealing with these products for years yeah of course yeah um so you know those products are, are obviously widely available from from uap but what's the most what's the biggest what's our best seller what do people buy the most of do you know um, <laughs> well, I suppose in terms of cylinders, uh, our market shifted really. We used to sell, but we didn't. We, we changed over the years. I've been at UAP. When I first originally came in, we we had uh, we, we only had a one star cylinder. There wasn't really we didn't really do a trade cylinder, and three star cylinders weren't around at that particular point, or certainly not in any volume. 
So we only did a one tar cylinder and we used to sell and we still do sell tens of thousands of them cylinders every month. But the market changed. We also saw the need for a trade cylinder because the, you know there were still people making standard trade uh, trade fabricated doors. So we saw the trade cylinder. But then the market did switch and did move towards three star TS007, which saw a gradual decline in one star cylinders with a switch from one star to three star cylinders. So our biggest selling, I would say that our, our cylinder market currently is probably split between one star and three star. And obviously anybody using a one star cylinder will use a, a cylinder guard or a high security handle to, to achieve TS007 three star. Um, but that's, that swing is always growing in favor of three star cylinders. And our just, uh, we just recently launched our K4 cylinder uh, to replace existing Kinetica. So that particular market again, after the marketing drive that we've had, Will continue to rise on, on three star cylinders. So I'd say certainly within 12 months that our three star cylinder sales will far exceed our one star cylinder sales, probably for the first time since I've been at UAP. Right. You know, really interesting, guys. And I think if we've got any existing customers that are watching, if they want any um, sort of information on or, or um, on testing and on, or if they want to do some indicative tests to get in touch with your team, Barry, or to get in touch with Julian and your team um, yeah. on the in website. The, yeah, in the first instance, just get in touch with yourself, contact, we'll point you in the right direction, we'll get Julian involved. Brilliant. Uh, that's what your needs are, what you're looking to achieve, and we'll, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll then uh, we'll speak to Julian. And we'll get Julian involved at that point. Thank you. And I think for new customers as well, that they can feel really assured that it's not just a product that they're buying. They're buying some knowledge, expertise. They can see that they're, you know, buying into a sort of a, a whole concept when they're purchasing products yeah, from you. And I think that's the, really important. Yeah, that. Yeah, absolutely. We, we you know, we, we've always said that we're not just box shifters. We don't just bring a product in, put it on a shelf and then send it out the door. We like to show people that we do innovate. We do work with customers. We make bespoke products for customers. We tweak products. We're yeah. constantly looking at NPD. Uh, and I, just by looking around UAP, and we do this quite regularly, we show people around. And the minute that we show them the testing facilities, they understand that we're not just trying to move a code on to, 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 to yeah. another code. We really, it needs to be a long-term relationship. Yeah. I find it fascinating whenever I come up to the office and Julian shows me around. I find it very fascinating. Ask uh, probably some silly questions, Julian, I'm sure. <laughs> Thanks for your knowledge and your insight today. Um, thank you both for your insight into your roles and also into what UAP offers, um, you know, both the um, existing customers and new customers. I think that product knowledge is really important. So that's it for our final episode of the Hardware Intel webinar three part series on legislation and testing topics. I'd like to say thank you for everyone who's joined me um, over this series because I found it really interesting and informative and I'm sure all our viewers have too. So if you're watching, please don't forget to subscribe to the UAP YouTube channel um, and I'll be back soon discussing some more in interesting industry topics. Thank you. Thanks very much. Thanks, Nicola. Thank you.